So welcome everybody to Dragonology Live in Melbourne. Thanks for all coming out tonight. Appreciate you taking the time and effort. Uh, as you probably know, Dragonology is a user group for people that use Dragon. And the idea is not to just have it focused on uh, the technology itself, but really do what a user group does best, which is find out how people use the technology in the context of other things how people put Dragon into their lives to make a difference to what they do to be more productive. So I'll talk more about that later on. Um, there isn't a guy called Trevor Butler in the room by any chance, is there? I'm very sad. I haven't had a chance to look at the invitation list. But Trevor asked back last year at uh, one of our online events whether we're planning on having events in Melbourne. And the answer is clearly yes, we are. So thank you for coming along to our first event in Melbourne. What we're going to do tonight, um, I'm going to switch this around, actually. I'm going to ask uh, James, uh, sorry, um, Johnny Moore up on stage in a minute to say hello to you from VoiceX. VoiceX is one of our value-added resellers based here in Melbourne. They do a fantastic job of helping uh, people come up to speed. And sorry, just to be clear, too, because if I say our, I'm, I'm getting my roles confused. So I'm two things tonight. I'm, I work with Nuance. Nuance is the American company that makes Dragon. Uh, we're based in Boston, and we have about 17,000 people worldwide. We don't just do the software that you're familiar. We do a whole lot of other stuff. Um, but also, part of what I did outside my day job was push to get this group up and going. And Nuance has kindly stepped in and is giving us some funding to get the group up and going. So the idea is that we'll run some events in the major centres over the next uh, few months. And we've started with Sydney, and we're following up with Melbourne now. Uh, but probably we'll focus on being online so that people can watch videos and recordings and maybe even podcasts and so on, wherever they are. So the idea is that this is the beginning. We've got some money from Nuance to keep it going, hopefully for the rest of the year. And after that, we'll have to see. But I would like to emphasize that it's a user group. So user groups need users to actually make it go. I'm going to give it a good stab at getting it going this year. But if you want to get involved and contribute in any way, please get on to me. And I'll let you know how you can help. Just to acknowledge our sponsors, uh, Nuance in particular, it's costing thousands of dollars to put these events on. So uh, please make sure you exploit them to their maximum. There will be a bar open at the end of this evening, and there will be uh, things to eat and drink. So please ensure that we uh, take full advantage of the sponsorship that Nuance is providing tonight. Um, Olympus has provided uh, one of the prize draws at the end of the evening tonight. And also, VoiceX is kindly providing some packages, including some Philips equipment. And we've got some visitors from Philips from overseas here tonight, too. So if you're interested in any Philips uh, hardware, you might like to have a chat with them later on and see what they're up to, what the latest and greatest is there. Now, Johnny, where are you? I'd like to welcome Johnny Moore on stage. Johnny is the Sales Director of Voice Communications. We've known each other for a very long time. And I'll hand over to him. Johnny, thanks for coming. Thank you. Cheers. Hi everyone, my name's uh, Johnny Moore. I'm Sales Director at uh, VoiceX Communications. We specialise in document creation, enterprise solutions. We also do training, implementation, configuration of Dragon. So we get you up to speed with Dragon, we configure the profiles, and we make sure that you're getting the most out of your Dragon profile that you've got. Okay? I'd like to welcome everyone to the first Melbourne Dragonology event. It, it has been a long and arduous effort by Derek and the Nuance team, but he got it up and running with a lot of work. And Dragonology, what Dragonology is, it's a vehicle, so you can share your experiences and discuss the common passion of speech recognition. So for all of those who haven't used speech recognition that are here tonight, it's a great product. It's getting more and more advanced with every version that comes out, and I implore you to try it to educate yourself. Tonight's about asking questions, about finding out as much information you can about Dragon, so your experience with Dragon can be much better. So I hope everyone enjoys the presentations tonight. If you haven't already, can you leave your card and the little glass thing out the front? We've got some good prize drawers for you to have. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good night tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you very much. 
And we've got a good uh, selection of VoiceX staff here tonight too. So again, uh, lots of people here who can help you later on, uh, particularly over a glass of wine or a glass of soft drink and work out what's going on. So what I wanted to start with tonight was just summarising what we've done so far in terms of the Dragonology group. And we sort of kicked off last year at the end of October. We're trying to get it into October, but we slipped till the end. And we had the live launch in Sydney. We had almost 100 people come along to uh, CBD Bar in the middle of Sydney, and we had a presentation from a futurist called Chris Craig Rispin, who gave us his overview of um, where things were going with regards to speech recognition, and a whole lot of other stuff as well. If you'd like to see any of the events I'm talking about tonight, you can see them on, on the website at um, www.dragonology.com.au. I think all but one of those are closed captioned as well. So if, uh, if you have trouble uh, with hearing any of the information that's there, you can also watch it. Following that Sydney launch, which was really well attended, it was fantastic, uh, in December we had an online session called Taming Your Dragon. And then we followed that up in February um, with a session called The Professionals, where we went through some of the professional options that came out around the new Dragon professional products, which have been released over the last couple of months. For one of those sessions, we were lucky enough to have Gary Quigley, who's one of our pre-sales guys from the UK. And Gary has a unique, uh, we call him Quiggles uh, fondly, he has a unique approach to life, very English, and he was a fantastic asset, and I'm hoping we'll get him along for another session in the near future. That brings us to tonight, which is the 16th of March. Who spotted the date error on the title slide, by the way? Thank you, sir. I corrected it in one place, please note, but I didn't fix it in the other. Um, that brings us along tonight. And we've got, um, we had over 100 people sign up, and I think we've probably got a fair proportion of those have come along tonight as well. So thanks very much for coming along. It's been overdue, and I hope there'll be many more of these as well. So just to re-emphasize, if you want to see any of the previous events, they have been recorded, and they will be online. Tonight's event is also being recorded and will also be online, so you'll be able to go back and watch it if you wish. So what's coming up next? What's in the schedule? Um, I just put in bright orange there, to be confirmed. We really uh, haven't locked in some of these times, although it's pretty certain on the first couple. So first of all, we're going to do an online session, which is a fairly, it, it may be a special interest uh, session, I think, but it's something that I feel very strongly about, and I know many people at Nuance do as well. And that's the use of Dragon in an educational context. So sure, you can use Dragon to write things more quickly, and to make it faster to produce documentation. But for people, students in particular, who have dyslexic style symptoms, where there's a disconnect between what they want to get out into the document and what they actually, what comes out at the fingers, where there's that disconnect, speech recognition can help some of those people to write more effectively. And at our next session, I'm pleased that we've got two amazing uh, speech therapists from a company in Brisbane called DARE and they're going to be taking us through how they use Dragon in their practice. So this may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I encourage anyone you know who's into that uh, special education area or who has children with those sorts of difficulties to take a look at this. And we were discussing earlier as well the general um, use of Dragon as part of the National Disability Insurance Program and so on, and we'll be following up on that in the next few uh, months as well. One of my main concerns with education is that um, the use of technology like speech recognition is nowhere near enough accepted in the various state institutions around the country and in the private ones as well, and that all of us need to make an effort to make that happen. So that's coming up in April, and I think that'll be really good. In May, we're following up on the promise to have an event in Brisbane, and we'll be having a similar event to these. I'm going to be there for a meeting tomorrow, and I'm going to scout uh, pubs. I don't think we're going to find one as good as this for some reason, that Brisbane just doesn't seem to have the ambience that Melbourne has, of course. Uh, so I think Melbourne will be the preferred location moving forward, but we'll have another event in Brisbane if any of you feel like a trip up north. And in June, I've got penciled in at this stage a Mac specialist session because many Mac users have said, I don't want to hear about this PC stuff. Are there any Mac users here tonight, by the way? Hands up. Couple. Great. So we'll have a special Mac session later in the year for you guys as well. So far, so good? Okay. If anyone has any questions, just yell at me too, by the way. I'm quite open to that. What else has been happening? So, um, we have a core mailing list now of over 1,300 people. So, we've got a good group of people in Australia, mainly Australia, 
um, of that size who were using Dragon in a fair, fairly serious way. And to be honest, that's exactly kind of where I thought we'd get the numbers in this country. I thought we'd have around um, 1,500 people who'd be interested in Dragon in a fairly serious way. So that's exactly where I thought it would be. We've got obviously many more people who've bought the product over the years, and there are thousands and tens of thousands, in fact, of those. Um, but there is a core group that use Dragon that get particular benefit from it. So congratulations, you're part of that group. Um, the other thing, though, that I've discovered is that Dragon, well, I should have known it, I guess, but Dragonologists are shy of social media. You guys don't seem to like Facebook very much, or no, I see kids shaking. Oh, you do? You, excellent, excellent. <laughs> Many people don't want to be bothered with uh, seeing things online. So um, I think where that got my, my thinking is because I've, I've moved into this space now where everything has to be online as far as technology is concerned. But I think uh, there's, a, there's a halfway stop back some years back when everything was done with email and we used things called list servers and we had special interest groups. So we might have had a Melbourne mailing list, we might have had a Mac mailing list and so on. And we're going to try that again. So I'm just sorting out the technology that's going to be used for running that. There's a gentleman in, in Brisbane called Noel Whitaker that some of you might have heard of. He's well known for um, financial, uh, originally started with financial advice in the Courier-Mail when I was growing up in Brisbane, and then he's moved on, obviously, and he's an associate professor and uh, specialises in financial uh, analysis and presentations. He, he is a Mac user, and he has kindly volunteered to coordinate the Brisbane user group. Um, that's probably overemphasising it, but he's going to help coordinate people that are uh, keen in Brisbane to get together, and hopefully they'll start independent meetings. I'd encourage all of you to do the same. So if there's anyone that would like to act as a local coordinator or several people that would like to act as a coordinator, we'll get that mailing list set up and then people will be able to do things by themselves, meet up for coffee, have a chat over the latest things and maybe run things independently. That's how a, a real user group would go. But I'm hoping Brisbane will be the first in that direction and we'll kick that off shortly. So with that in mind, I've also, over the last few months, a few Sundays, I didn't do it last Sunday, but I did the two previous Sundays, I've sent you out newsletters, which you may choose not to read if you wish, of course, but I'll start sending more direct email that's more casual. Um, I'll try and separate formal announcements out from my opinion pieces or whatever. If any of you want to write stuff and have it distributed, just send it to me and I'll get it out there as well. The other thing, um, to apologise to the people who aren't here, we did some fairly untargeted ma mailings to the rest of the planet, asking them if they could be in Melbourne tonight, and I had a few people tell me, I'm in Undernata, I really don't want to come to Melbourne in uh, March and say hi. So we're trying to get that under control too. So hopefully none of you will receive an invitation to the Brisbane meeting, but it, unless you want to, but if you do, please let me know and I'll sort that out. So far, so good. Any questions? Why don't we have a blog? We have, um, we have two things. We've got a Facebook page called Dragonology, and we've got that website that I mentioned before. That actually has been configured to have a blog. Um, I think it's an action item for me to actually work out how to enable it and then work out what to do with it. So we actually do have a blog, it's just there's nothing there at the moment. So stay tuned. The, the other thing, I, haven't, I, I guess I haven't been giving that a great priority because my impression is that not many people are looking at those sites. So um, I'll activate the blog and let's see how much activity there is. Yeah? yeah. So you can post questions and exactly. And that was my thought, th thought from the first online sessions we had is that the Q&A sessions in particular, we could just post them online and people could read them at any time. And some people prefer to read those things and search for those things rather than watching a video to get that information. But yeah, I'll let you know when it's up and feel free to contribute. Love to see some con contributions. All right, moving on. How are we doing for time? Superbly. So Dragon News. I've got a, just a few items here. First of all, Dragon Pro Group. This is the product that we just launched in, uh, Nuance just launched in uh, this region a few weeks back. Uh, it came, came along with a Nuance User Management Centre. This is Dragon's first real um, effort to address the enterprise space. And that's being done through the combination of Dragon Professional Group software, a cloud-based Nuance user management center that allows you to, that allows a, an IT administrator to look at what uh, licenses are being used where, 
to see how Dragon is being deployed in the organisation and to optimise all of that. And then all of that coming together with planning, training and customization for the service itself. So most of you won't be interested in that, but this is a truly significant advance for the Dragon software, Dragon platform, where it's moving towards a bigger, a bigger space and looking to deploy uh, into the cloud with some additional pieces that I'll mention in a minute and take that to a whole new level and to really encompass where technology is going at the moment as far as moving across multiple devices and becoming easy to use, not just on your laptop, but also your mobile devices. End of that. So the other announcement is, are there any medical people in the audience tonight? A couple? Excellent. Thanks for coming. Uh, we also recently, I think about 10 days ago, announced Dragon for Mac Medical. This is the new Mac software. It's uh, now available for download. The boxes will be shipping hopefully this week. It's coming on USB sticks rather than DVDs. Hooray, finally. And hopefully all the products will be following on that for physical shipments. The main things about that is it supports the last three Mac operating systems, which are the, the modern versions of El Capitan, uh, Yosemite, and Mavericks. And importantly for Mac users, it's also supporting Office 2016. The kind of things it gives uh, doctors and other medical professionals is exactly the same sort of thing that you will see for the Windows version of the product. So it is a different product with a different history to the Windows software, so it has different capabilities and quite a different uh, flavour to it, but it's basically enabling medical people to be able to not just take patient notes, uh, but also to write letters, to write documents, emails, etc., and be more productive the way that, that all of us are being. Interestingly, um, it supports over 90 different specialty vocabularies. So this is where the, per, the customization of the Dragon software starts to show its true superiority to other forms of speech recognition because Dragon for Mac Medical has been optimized for those different specialties and that means that out of the box you've got a much higher accuracy rate for the specific terminology used in your discipline. So, this is already out there with the Dragon Medical Practice Edition, and now it's on Mac as well in the latest version. Just a little bit on international things. So, um, does everybody know what Dragon Anywhere is? Hands up. No one knows what Dragon Anywhere is. I should have recycled some slides from my last session. You guys need to go back and watch the videos, please. So, Dragon Anywhere is a product that's been announced so far for the US, UK, and Germany. It is a cloud-based uh, speech recognition service that runs on your iOS devices, your Apple iPhones or your Apple iPad, or your Android devices. What it gives you is a word processing application that works much the same way as Dragon does on Windows or Mac. You can talk, you can edit, you can correct, you can then send the document wherever you want. So that Dragon Anywhere gives you the capability to do exactly the same sort of speech recognition on your mobile device that you've been doing on your desktop. Also, it integrates with your desktop application at the level of things like word lists, two things. So first, vocabulary, we would call it on the Mac, can be shared between the mobile platform and the desktop machine. The second thing is there's a similar, there are, there's a, a, an ability on the Dragon Anywhere product to do things called auto text, which are just like macros, voice commands, as we call them on the desktop platforms. And that means that you can do things like forms and so on on your mobile app. So if there's something you do all the time, so maybe you're an insurance assessor, you're a, um, a lawyer who's making file notes, you're a uh, caseworker visiting children at home and making notes on their progress, you can use a standard form for filling out that information. Dragon Anywhere will then let you send that text that you've put into the system wherever you want it to go. So it's a real boon um, to mobile workers and it's kind of the future of this technology as well, I think, because it means you can use speech recognition in a full sense anywhere that you are. We don't have it for Australia yet. Yes, question. Um, just a question. Um, hmm. I mean, like probably many people, I have iOS devices and iPhone and iPad, but um, hmm. uh, Windows computer. Um, what advantage does it have over Mac and so the question is, is, it, is this compatible with, um, if you're running Apple mobile devices, will it integrate with Windows Dragon? Yes, it will. 
So this is a great thing. The integration, though, just to, it's really clear. It's not, a, it's not really at a speech level. It's at a document level. So you're sending documents backwards and forwards. You're sending vocabulary. So if, if you have a patient called Mr. Ernst Milo, a very strange Polish name or something that you've never hear in English, you can put that into your vocabulary, and that will appear on all your devices. So that the level of integration is quite specific. So it sounds great. Um, there are two issues at the moment as far as Australia is concerned. First, we don't have localization for Australian accents. So you won't find this app, for example, in the Apple Store at the moment. You won't find it in the Google Play Store in Australia at the moment. We don't have Australian accents. The second thing is that many of the people that will want to use this application are in large organizations, and they have reasons for not, and in fact, they even have legislation that requires them not to share data outside their state or the country. In New South Wales, I think there's some interesting medical legislation that says you can't take patient data outside New South Wales. I think that's being reviewed because that sounds very strange. So what we need to do are two things for Australia is get it, lo get it localised to support Australian accents. If you're listening elsewhere, same deal there. Other, other accents need to be localised, although most people around the world can get by on a US or a UK accent. The second thing and then is to get some local data hosting uh, cloud services here so that it can be provided. We haven't made it, Nuance hasn't made any announcements on when, I should say when or if this will be available, but I hope we'll have something to say soon. The second thing there is Dragon Legal US has been announced. Dragon Legal US is a, Dragon Legal, it's called on the corporate website, www.nuance.com. This is a US specific product designed for US law, so please don't go buying it if you're a lawyer here because it's not really what you need. Um, so, just to let you know, that is announced. I think it's probably about to ship. We will have um, be announcing something for the Dragon Legal Australian version in the very near future. We're just working through a couple of technical issues at the moment. Stay tuned for information about that. If anyone in, is here from New Zealand or if anyone from New Zealand is listening, same story. We will have a Dragon Legal Australian, uh, effectively a version 14, coming soon, and the same for New Zealand. Any questions, comments? Does anyone have their own Dragon use? Yes, sir. If you were driving home, could you put your thoughts into Dragon Anywhere? Yes, that's the kind of thing you could do. Without speaker. Um, just doing exactly what you do now, yeah. Hands free. Hands free. Or you could use a Bluetooth device, or you could use your car kit, I guess, depending on what your car's got in it. So there's, there's possibilities there, yes. So I can get Dragon Anywhere and put it on my phone. You hopefully will be able to get Dragon Anywhere and put it on your phone. That, I want to be very clear, it's not available for Australia yet. So we haven't announced it. And Nuance being a publicly listed company, we can't announce unannounced product. I can't informally announce a product until it's actually available. So I hope we'll have something to say about that soon. Does that make sense? You can't do it today. It needs A, localization for Australia. It needs B, local hosting so that it, the data doesn't get sent uh, somewhere that you don't want it to go. All right. Any other comments or questions before I move on? Yes, sir. We were talking earlier about um, people with disabilities. Uh, we're involved with um, e-trial students with visually impaired. So if they could have use of the software, and this is always the challenge you know, who provides the software for those to be able to dictate the notes instead of the top of the So is the going to help when they're saying you're interested in supporting people with disabilities? So the question is, um, students with disabilities want to be able to get hold of Dragon. Will Nuance help do that? So Nuance helps with student-teacher versions of all the software, which is, or not all, I think all, most of the software, which is about 50% of the cost. We also help with um, lab packs of various shapes and sizes for schools and other educational institutions. Um, and we're very keen to help in other ways too. So um, it's always a difficult question of who pays for this and how it works, but we're very happy to help in any way we can. The best way is to talk to uh, the people running these pro the programs in government and get, get some sort of arrangement made so that it, it benefits nuance because there's mass scale and it benefits everybody who needs the software because they've got the benefits of that lower price. 
So hopefully, yes, and we'd love to have that conversation with anyone who's interested. Not just for disabilities, education is the other one that I think it needs it as well. Okay. Thank you. Now, in terms of that original introduction where I was talking about uh, using Dragon as part of a workflow, what I thought I'd talk about today is this thing here. Has anyone got one of these? Do you know what it is? Can, can't hear you. It is. It's a Surface Pro 4, in fact. And I wanted to do a short review, probably about 10 minutes, just talking about this device. Um, it's something that has been on my to-do list. Uh, Nathan Taylor, my boss, will tell you it's been on my to-do list for about a year because we wanted to see if we could use this device, the Surface Pro 3, in fact, for Dragon. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Why do I want to review it? So a, few, a couple of years ago, around 2013, we were working, we were actually asked to come in and see some quite large organisations. It was just when tablets were becoming popular. The iPad was um, just coming in. There are a lot of Me Too things out there as well. And many organisations had gone out and bought devices and sort of, you know, hundreds, sometimes thousands of them and wanted to know what to do with them. So they had all these devices and it occurred to them one of the things they could do was run speech recognition software on it and, and maybe use it for doing some of those sort of note-taking type things that we were mentioning before. Um, there's a lot of law enforcement things that can be done with them and so on. The problem was that at that point, these devices were all fairly flimsy. They often weren't running Intel processors. They weren't running a full Windows operating system. They were running some godforsaken thing called Windows RT that many of you might remember, which has now gone away. And they weren't really real Windows devices. And the situation, still to a great extent, is that Dragon software needs the sorts of resources that a laptop size machine, particularly as it was in 2013, needs to run. It needs not just the CPU speed, because the, the tablets on the whole are pretty fast now, but it also needs the power. If you're running speech recognition all the time, you're going to kill your battery, because speech recognition, as you know, it takes 100 samples of audio a, a second, and then it does all the statistical number crunching to work out what you're saying. So if you've got a, a poor little iPhone this big with only a small, tiny battery, and you spend it doing heavy scale intensive speech recognition, the phone will be flat in about five minutes. It also needs a fair bit of storage, um, you know, hundreds of uh, megabytes to store your profile and to store some of the speech data. So the question was, can we run Dragon on something like a tablet? And at that point, the Surface Pro 3 had come out the previous year um, in some, sorry, the Surface Pro had come out. It was still a bit lacking at that time, although there were some people that were managing to get Dragon to run on it. But when the Surface Pro 3 came out, it was clear that we could run Dragon on that. So this became really the standard bearer for Windows tablet devices. It's sort of Microsoft's conception of what these should be looking at. So in some sense, it's inspiring the rest of the market, and we've got now lots of manufacturers making cheaper and perhaps even better versions of this sort of device than this one is. But it's the flagship. It's something that we all need to know about. And so the question is, what do we think about this platform? How's it going now? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So this is what I think about it. So just some caveats. These are my own opinions. They're not nuances. They're not dragonologies. They're not uh, anyone else's. It's what I think about it. When you do these reviews, it's always personal. It depends on how you use computing environment and what you're doing. In my case, I'm probably literally at the bleeding edge a lot of the time because I'm trying to run the latest and greatest. We're in the software industry. We need to show Microsoft that we can run on their latest platform and that um, we're better than their built-in speech recognition, so you really need to use us. Same with Apple, etc. We need to be able to integrate with stuff that maybe most people in the world aren't using at the moment. Excuse me. So my use of this technology, when I travel, I'm still traveling with two devices usually. I'm still traveling with a Mac and usually a Surface Pro, which is much lighter than a laptop, which is one good thing about the Surface Pro. Um, I'm hoping soon to get this down to one device. And we'll see how we go. But when I'm traveling, I carry two devices running both operating systems. When I'm at home, I tend to be working in my home office with a big screen. 
if I go into the, the office for meetings or whatever, I'll take a laptop with me or just take a mobile device. So my needs are a bit different to everybody else's. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is that it's not just this device that's uh, changed in the intervening period. We're going through this whole process now where the industry is changing, the, the role of desktop applications in, the, in modern IT is changing, and in particular, Microsoft itself is reinventing itself, and there's a question mark after that because um, hopefully they're reinventing themselves. It's a really hard thing for Microsoft, which has all this existing installed base of software, um, that, and it's been a software company for all its life, and it now seems to be trying to become a services company, or maybe even a cloud company, something different, and we'll see whether that works out. As a consequence, um, Microsoft is changing, its software is also changing. So we've got Windows 10 uh, as a new thing. Does anyone here use Windows 10? That's encouraging, that's good. So you've got Windows 10 in desktop mode or Windows 10 in tablet mode. What do you do there? Um, and then you've got everything that came before it. So I think it's just shifting in the last 12 months. There's still a lot of people running Windows 7, right? And they're only gradually moving. There's been this big transition phase on the OS where everybody hated Windows 8. Microsoft sort of did the back, sh back shuffle and, and rejigged a few things and made it different. So Windows 10 has also been evolving. So when I compare the Surface Pro 3, for example, with the Surface Pro 4, it's also Windows that's changed. It's not just the hardware and the device. And also Microsoft Office is changing. So Microsoft Office on Windows is different from Microsoft Office on the Mac is different from Microsoft Office on the um, mobile devices, painfully so. I often feel like I'm fighting applications these days to get things done. So keep that in mind as well. And I'd love to talk about that more later on over a drink if you're interested. Final caveat is that there were teething issues with this device. When it came out, there were lots of weird things happening. Uh, you'd shut the lid and it wouldn't turn itself off. The, it was doing strange things. There was a, um, a firmware upgrade released about a month ago that seems to have solved a lot of those issues. But my review of this has been um, curtailed, shall we say, because for the first month of having it, I felt like throwing it against a wall a lot of the time in terms of getting it going. So all that said, let's look at the big picture. So first of all, there's three members of the Microsoft laptop, tablet, Surface family, if you like. The Surface 3, which you can see how much Microsoft loves it because it's right down at the, uh, the bottom of the screen there, starting at 699 Australian dollars. So it's not something that Microsoft, I think, will see hanging around for very much longer. You can still buy the Surface uh, Pro 3, by the way, as well. Um, then there's the, the Surface Pro, which is the device that we're talking about here tonight which starts at uh, $2,299 in local currency. And then there's the Surface Book, which is a much more traditional laptop form factor that I think everybody can know and love. It's, it's something that's not too different from what we've had before. This is what the Surface Pro 4 looks like. It's got this um, keyboard cover which clicks onto the bottom of the base. You never see pictures of it without it. And it's got the stand at the back that adjusts really to any other angle, to any angle you want to use it at. This was new with the Surface Pro 3. Before that, you had a limited choice of um, angles. And then it's also got that pen, and um, that pen has been revised in the latest edition as well. So it's an attractive device. It looks really good. Um, and it's something you think might be pretty good. So those are the base configurations. It comes with three different processor options. There's a, an Intel Core M3, an Intel Core i5, and an Intel Core i7. So the i5 and the i7 are, are, are numbers you'll be used to from uh, desktop and laptop systems, and they're powerful machines. The M3 is a mobile CPU, and the interesting thing about the M3 is it doesn't require a fan. So it's more like something like an iPad, where you've got a silent device that isn't making a noise uh, all the time. All these devices come without the keyboard cover, which is called a type cover. And that's an additional $200 on top. So most people buying the Surface Pro seem to be actually buying the cover as well. But there's certainly a class of people who are using it, for example, to control conference rooms and so on, where they don't need the keyboard. They're actually using it only as a tablet. I won't go through these in details. I really wanted to point out two things, three things. First, um, in green, the weight. So this device weighs 786 grams in the i5 or i7 combinations. Now, just for comparison, that's um, 
just under half, twice what an iPad or the equivalent Samsung tablet weighs. So that it's a fairly heavy thing as a tablet. Um, too heavy for me, actually. The other thing is that Microsoft says up to nine hours of video playback, and we'll come to that one later on. And finally, in green for Dragon users, note that it's got stereo microphones. Do we know what that means? So that means it's got two microphones in the top, but the good thing from, from that point of view with speech recognition is we go back to Intel's uh, Ultrabook specification from a few years back where they included, with, and we had some input into that, Nuance had some input into that, we included some specs in that device that provided for speech recognition quality sound as part of the standard set. And this device has speech recognition quality audio in it. So for the last 18 months, I, if you've seen me do a demo like this on a stage with Dragon, I've been using a Surface Pro 3 and I've been using the built-in microphones in the device. So it means you can use this device for speech recognition without necessarily having to wear a headset. And the, the usual caveat is that uh, obviously in a noisy room you'll get much better results with a headset. But if you're just looking at the device like this and everybody's being uh, obediently quiet, it'll work really well. So as I mentioned, the type cover isn't included with the speakers. Just point out they've also got a new dock with this device. The previous dock with the Surface Pro 3 only allowed you to have the screen at one orientation, which is really irritating. Um, the new one is just really a solid brick that you plug in the power. You've got ports in the back for extra USB ports, Ethernet, etc., and you can uh, just hook that up at your desk and, and, bit, and run it, as it were. And then you've got all lots of uh, accessories in terms of cables and so on as well. So it looks pretty nice. Um, so it's really great for Dragon, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to skip the Dragon demonstration tonight, unless we run out of, oh, we're doing well. Um, so it's great for Dragon, I recommend it. What didn't I like about it? So first of all, it's got messy, ugly ports and cables. I'm so offended. Um, there's a trade-off here. So um, the photo there on the right, you can see, we've got three ports on the right. We've got the power port, where this, this cable, you can stick it, have it sticking up, or you can have it sticking down, but it's, it never goes where you want. If you have it sticking down, it comes in front of the keyboard and you've got to try and get it around. If you have it sticking up, it runs into the other cables if you're using them and so on. So we've got US, one USB port on the side and we've got um, a display port on the top, which at the moment is doing HDMI onto the screen. So that's a bit of a, an aesthetic thing, but it, it compares for me with the I, iPad. If, you've got a, if you're doing something with an iPad and you need to charge it or you need to have a video feed coming out of it, you've got one cable coming out of the bottom and you can still hold it and use it. Second thing I didn't like about the Surface Pro 3, I'm, I'm going back one version here, poor battery life. So the battery life was only three or four hours with the Surface Pro 3, which is not a lot of uh, time these days for any normal laptop system or for any tablet you can get a day out of a tablet or a laptop these days. There's only one USB port. Even worse, it wouldn't charge my iPhone. There wasn't enough power there to charge a measly little iPhone. So if I was traveling, I had to make sure that I would always carry an extra charger. It had a noisy average keyboard with a ridge trackpad. That sounds like something exotic. I've got a ridge trackpad on my Surface Pro 3. But it meant that there was a, something you could feel as you slid your finger backwards across the trackpad, and it, it had no functional reason except it was there, and it was really annoying. Um, there's nowhere to stick the pen. It has a pen, but Microsoft gave you an adhesive loop that you could stick on the side of your device and stick the pen in. How is that good design? And it had an odd three to two aspect ratio. So it's kind of a funny shape. It's not good for movies. It's not the traditional form factor for a, a TV screen or a mo computer monitor. It's something in between, which is um, odd, to say the least. I couldn't get used to it. Seven, I guess this encompasses many of it. It's, it's a hybrid, so you've got compromises. You've got a heavy tablet, um, and you're not sure what to do with it because mostly for the people in this room, there's not a lot you can run as a tablet application on, under Windows 10 at the moment. You're stuck normally in desktop mode running desktop applications. So why do you need a heavy tablet? On the other hand, it's not a laptop. It's got this thing on the back which is a guillotine for your knees. If you put that on your knees, it actually hurts. You can't use it in a plane without a tray. You can't even sit back and watch a video in the lounge room and use it conveniently. So uh, it's, it's problematic for me. So I was hoping the Surface Pro 4 would address some of these issues. And, and what was better in it? It's still great with Dragon. No problem with Dragon whatsoever. It's faster, of course. It's got a brighter, more colourful, 
higher resolution display. The screen is fantastic. You can crank it up and it looks really good. The uh, density of the pixels is up there at that magic retina level that Apple likes to talk about, where it's the same as uh, the, hu you, the human eye allegedly can't see any more detail. So it's up to 267 pixels per inch, and the resolution is 2700 by 1800 pixels. So it's really good. Slightly larger screen, about a third of an inch bigger. It's got a ridgeless trackpad. Hooray. Really good stuff. And it's got an improved pen now with magnets. So you can stick it on the edge. It's got a flat side. That's why the flat side actually sticks on the edge like that. Um, doesn't mean you won't lose it because it'll be knocked off easily, but at least you've got somewhere to stick it if you want to. The one thing I really liked, actually, was the face recognition. It recognises me and it doesn't recognise my daughter, so she can't get into my computer anymore by sneakily putting her own thumbprint into the device. Um, what else is good? It's got a better keyboard. It's still not really quiet. My wife was telling me to shut up and go to sleep last night when I was typing in bed last night, so it hasn't passed that test yet. It's got a chiclet-style keyboard. There's more space between the keys. The trackpad's also better. I think it's um, glass. It's either glass or plastic, but anyway, it's a different material and it's better than it was before. And they've just introduced in Australia a fingerprint option on the type cover. It's a separate pad on the uh, on just below the keyboard where you can put your finger and use fingerprint recognition to get into the system. That's $50 extra. And hooray, you can now charge a smartphone using the USB port. So that's really good. And the charger has a USB port as well, which nobody seems to have mentioned. So I don't know if it's a specific Australian thing. I, I doubt it. But you've got an extra USB port, which if you're travelling is important. The dock, I think, is more useful as well. It's more flexible. So 3 plus 1 equals 4. Surface Pro 3, add another version, you get a 4, and for me it gets a tick. What didn't I like? Well, as you can guess, some things didn't change. It's still got the messy, ugly ports and cables. Um, still poor battery life, 9 hours claimed, but none, none of the reviewers that have looked at the device seem to have got more than 4 hours out of it, most about 3, three hours and 15 minutes. And so it hasn't got a great battery life. The odd 3 to 2 aspect ratio continues and the hybrid compromises continue as well. Now, the one thing that I found unusual is that the Surface Pro 3 had a fan, apparently, but I didn't notice it. I don't think I... Maybe once I noticed that the Surface Pro 3 had its fan on. The Surface Pro 4 sure does, and I don't know if it's the hot weather we've had in Sydney the last few weeks, but it, that fan has been burning away. And again, I, I have some hope that this is a teething issue that will be resolved, but it's, it's really annoying when you've got a tablet and it's making a fan noise. It just not what tablets are supposed to do. Okay, so I'm going to skip the demo because I've gone a little bit longer than I wanted. Um, any questions about the Surface Pro 4? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. That's great. So the feedback there is it's wonderful. It is a laptop. You're talking rubbish, Derek. <laughs> oh, it, it was more a re refutation of what I said. So can we get a microphone up here? Is it, do we have one? One second, please. I'll just see if we can plug you in. And I'll ask you to say it again if you wouldn't mind. And, and while we're talking, I might ask James up on stage too so he can get involved. So we've got one question, one comment here, I think. Well, I'm just sort of confused, Eric, as to why you think it's not a laptop, because that's exactly how I use it, um, and I can't think of any other... Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, all right. I'm just confused as to why Derek doesn't see it as a laptop. That's exactly how I use mine. I've got the Surface Pro 3, and I've been using it, I don't know, two years now? Yeah, maybe a bit longer. Um, I can't think of any other device, and I've used small laptops and things like that, that I can carry with me that will give me total access to all of my clients' histories, any reports that I want to update after a session. Um, every document I want is there. I can't do that with an iPad, you know. I've got my entire um, repertoire of files and documents, um, performers and things that I can go to. 
Um, and it's, it's a bit heavier, yes, but it's not as heavy as most laptops. It's got far more power than the smaller ones, and I love it. I think it's great. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's take another comment up the back. We'll come back and process some of this after we've heard a few people commenting, perhaps. I was just wondering whether it had uh, 4G in it. Uh, no, it doesn't. So there's no LTE bandwidth options whatsoever. So does anyone have any comments on whether it's a laptop or not? Is there any other Surface Pro 3, uh, Surface Pro users in particular? Like, do you think I'm talking rubbish? I'd love to hear. I take... I can take a gigabyte of photos a day, so it's not a laptop to me. Well, yeah, I guess it depends on what you're using it for. Yeah, and it I, depends on what you're using it for. And I guess um, I, 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 when I say it's not a laptop, I'm not really comparing it with an iPad. I'm comparing it with something that I can sit on my knees with a flat bottom and close. So I, I'd be comparing it with, um, you know, even the Surface Book, which is the, the next one up in the Microsoft family where it's just better ergonomics in terms of moving something around. Whereas this, I find that stand, if it didn't have, yes. yeah. Yes, the balance is not there. Yeah. But it, it's no yeah. argument, it's a, it's a perfectly wonderful desktop machine. Surface book. Ah, that's a Surface book, there we are. Thank you very much, sir. So in comparison, exactly the, the same sort of um, capabilities as far as, um, yeah, hand it around. I haven't seen one yet. It's on my shopping list. See, Seems a bit heavy, though, would be my comment. <laughs> um, so it's not just a Microsoft race here. There's all the usual PC manufacturers, Lenovo, et cetera, have devices like this one in particular. And I think if it's a laptop you're after, that may be a better choice. Um, this is, the advantage of this is it is really light, but there are also laptops now which, uh, you know, like the Windows equivalent of the MacBook Air style configuration, which are also very light. So I don't want to diss this in terms of power. It is very powerful. Um, and as I say, it's a really good Dragon machine too. There is a support page. There is a telephone number here. There's free support available for current versions, going back the last two versions. Please give them a call. Um, if they're unresponsive or unable to help, let me know. But the service is there. And um, people have problems. And uh, the support guys may be able to help. So we've moved on to q and I'd ask James to come up on board. Um, James is from VoiceX. He's the technical manager there. So if you'd like to open it up to more general Dragon questions, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Derek. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's James. Uh, I work at VoiceX Communications as the technical manager. So basically handle any technical questions um, to do with Dragon and other software as well. Um, I guess the point today is just to get some feedback from you guys, any questions in terms of using the software. I'm um, also one of the trainers at VoiceX as well, so um, happy to field any questions that you guys might have. Derek, was your plan to just sort of get Q&A directly? Yeah, or? so um, yeah, I'll we'll be floating around the a questions bit later on and, as well. Um, so. Whoever can handle them. Question here. Yeah. Oh, question, sorry. Um, I, thanks for the opportunity. I've been using Dragon since 1999. Um, the only time I've ever, ever had any problems loading is with Dragon 13. It's been a nightmare to load it. Um, it, it I've got five machines in, in my office and it loaded on two and not on the other three and it took a whole lot of time to do it. Um, with my own personal machine, uh, a problem emerged where it wouldn't turn off the microphone um, and so I, I thought there would be a repair component of Dragon 13 uh, and so uh, I finished up deleting Dragon 13 and then I had to go back to Dragon 10 and reload Dragon 11, Dragon 12, Dragon 13 to get back to Dragon 13. It actually fit, fixed the problem but it was a nuisance, I can tell you. The other thing that drives me mad is that um, when I'm doing an abbreviation, um, I, I don't have the choice either everything's abbreviated or nothing's abbreviated. So that if I say major, it comes up with M-A-J. If I say I don't want that, then I, I do a lot of medical legal work, so I say doctor, and it comes up with D-O-C-T-O-R when I want D-R, and that drives me mad. Yeah, well, sure. So the first, the first question about installation, it can be a little bit James of a pain. <laughs> yeah, this is probably more one for Derek, actually, for the installation files, but um, we've noticed that as well since version 13, installation can be a little bit of a, a pain. Uh, it seems to be something weird going on with the CDs, and I think that's one of the reasons that we're making the switch to USB now. Uh, also, with a lot of devices simply not having optical drives anymore, 
it just makes more sense, really, to have them on USBs. Um, anyone who's having installation-related problems, the best way probably is to try to copy the content. This is pretty much out of the book from if you call technical support as well, but see if you can copy the content of the disk to your hard disk and install it from there. Um, otherwise, you can, uh, we can provide download links for the media as well. Um, obviously, we won't provide licenses. That's what you need to purchase. But um, we can provide download links as alternatives to, uh, to the optical media, and that can help for the installation as well. Yeah. Um, don't don't go through devices. that install the last three version stuff. Just talk to VoiceX or talk to Nuance Support and there's get them a, to give yeah, you a Yeah, there's a bit of a shortcut. It's a bit of a workaround, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to Derek about that later. <laughs> okay. Yes, hi. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree with the doctor and doctor thing. I, I do a lot of medical legal oh, stuff okay. too. Yeah. And, um, you know, he went to see his doctor. Well, it either comes up as DR, or if I have it coming up as doctor, then, you know, he went to see Dr. So and so, then it puts that in the whole thing, which, you know, drives you crazy. It's either one or the other. But the question I actually wanted to ask was that I have um, the Dragon app on both my iPhone and my iPad, and that's fine for taking notes, but getting it transferred across to the computer is another ball game altogether. I'm not sure whether I just, you know, am dumb and haven't worked out how to do it, but. Yeah. Is there a way of doing it? Sure. Well, the first, your first question was actually your second question, which we forgot to answer, so apologies for that. Um, obviously, you're talking about the auto format setting, uh, where you choose whether it abbreviates titles or not. And um, I think it used to be enabled by default, but mm. it seems with the later versions it's not. Obviously, you can turn that on if you want. But um, you don't want things like Mr. and Mrs. to be typed in full, but you do want, as you said, major. And um, I think one I had come up today was director. One way around that is to decide which way works better for you. Um, you may choose to, for example, turn, it, turn the abbreviations off, and then for specific words that you do want to abbreviate, you can then give them alternative uh, written forms, specifically, just for those one word, uh, those specific words. So, uh, what's that, sorry? Yeah, well, you can go into the editor, and you can actually add an uh, alternative form for that particular word. So um, obviously the, the setting in the auto format options is, is really an all or nothing thing. As, as you said as well, it'll abbreviate the whole lot or it won't abbrevi abbreviate any at all, which is um, not ideal, but it makes sense that that's the way it's implemented. So if you've got a, few, a select few that you do want to abbreviate or a select few that you don't, obviously set that option for the way that suits you best and then change the specific ones that, you, that don't suit that one for. Yeah, it is. It's a, it can be a pain for certain ones, yeah. So the second question was about uh, Dragon on the Mac. Uh, sorry, Dragon on your iPhone. That's... Yeah, yeah. So that's obviously the free app that you're talking about there. Just that's... Um, I think Derek can shed more light on what the intended purpose of that software is. I think it's really just to give you a taste of what Dragon's all about, how the speech rec works, how well it can work for you. Um, I guess the short answer to that was, would be you just have to copy the text, email it to yourself, perhaps. Um, I don't remember what, is exactly. That what you're, so you're using uh, the Dragon Dictation app? Is that the one? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. So it uh, uh, Nuance has created sort of a rod for its own back on this because it's different technology. So Nuance Dictation was designed to be more like a Siri or a Google style of speech recognition software. So it's really quite separate. So when you say in transfer, you're talking about the text, or you want to save the audio? I mean, if I, if I, I mean, it, it works. Yep. So from memory, there is a little pointy arrow thing that you can click that lets you mail it. I think there's it a share. There's yeah. a share button which you can choose where you want it to go, whether it gets copied to an email or a text message or whatever. It's a bit clunky, but it's free, so I guess you get what what you get. But um, you're also limited in what you can dictate in that software I think, as well. I think you get about 20 or 25 seconds worth of dictation, and it might be sent offshore. Does it? Does that, where does it actually get Yes, processed? that is sent offshore, so that's sent to the US, so... Yeah, so yep. it might get delayed a little bit. <laughs> well, the, the other thing you can use your mobile devices for at the moment, of course, is recording. So, um, again, something you showed on the last um, webinar session was using a recording made on a mobile phone and then transferring that to your laptop to have it transcribed. So that's another option you can do. And that, that can be a, you know, there's a, a dozen more than a dozen recording applications you can choose from that will transfer via Dropbox, will transfer via all sorts of ways to get the audio back. 
and then we have use a couple drag of, into We have a couple of options that work really well as well. So if you want to grab one of our cards at the end of the session, give us a buzz tomorrow or later during the week, and we can suggest a few alternatives as well. Yeah. Uh, I've used Dragon 13 and uh, on Word, no problems at all. However, I also do emails on Yahoo and on Lotus Notes, and I'm having great difficulties to be able to uh, get the same sort of voice recognition on those two email packages. Could you give me some suggestions, please, as to what I could do? Yeah, sure. So the first one, the Yahoo one, is probably dependent on what web browser you're using. Um, you just use the webmail, is that right? Or Are you using Firefox? Firefox, yep. So um, there's probably... Uh, the way Dragon controls web browsers is using uh, add-ins or plugins or whatever the browser wants to call them. Um, just make sure it's enabled, make sure it's allowed. Um, sometimes there's a bit of catch-up. Uh, I know Firefox is up to version 500 or something. They just keep updating all the time. So Nuance has to play catch-up a little bit when they change something and break something. Nuance have to release a patch to fix it. So it's the same with Chrome that updates quite a lot. In general, I think you probably get the best compatibility out of... Uh, in the past, it's been Explorer. I suppose Edge is Edge. Well, Edge, well at the, at the Edge at the moment doesn't have any API architecture, which means that Nuance and anyone else can't actually make any plugins to work with it. Probably, so probably you Chrome. You might find better compatibility with, with Chrome. Mm -hmm. Then we've found the Chrome plugin works pretty well. Um, but worst case scenario, if it doesn't control the text at all, if you guys can see on the Dragon Bar, on your Dragon Bar there's a little green light. Um, or if you're using the old style Dragon Bar across the top or across the bottom, there's a green tick. And if you're in a supported application or a supported text field, that tick will be lit, or the little green light will be lit. Oh, and when you hover your mouse over that, sorry, Derek. that's okay. Yep. On. If you hover your mouse over that, it'll say full text control is enabled, or something along those lines. Essentially, what that means is Dragon can see what's going on in that text field. So things like corrections, selecting words by text and changing them, um, even basic things like capitalizing after a full stop. Dragon needs to know that there was a full stop there in order to capitalise the next letter. If you can't read the text in that box, it's not able to do that. So have a look for that green light or that green tick. Um, if it's there, everything should work. If it's not there, you can use the dictation box as an alternative. So uh, if it doesn't suit, if the browser's not, not working for whatever reason, um, any of the other application in, in the Lotus. So we've got a lot of people in government using Lotus, for example. Um, Generally, it won't support it directly, but the dictation box is your friend there, and it works really well. Okay, so unfortunately, we've run out of time for the formal part of the presentation, but we're going to continue after drinks. So before we do that, because some people want to get away, we're going to um, have a dragon lucky draw. So we've got some contributions from Olympus and VoiceX. Thank you very much. He, he's going to be... You're not going anywhere, are you? No, I'll be floating around. James will be here, so grab him later and ask questions. And Marty is going to, first of all, I'm going to draw a winner for the Olympic Olympus Redmic DR1200. Monica Pinder. Monica? Monica's up the back there. That's that one. Thank you very much. And then the first of the Voice X prizes is a copy of Dragon Professional Individual. And the winner of that is uh, Nalini. Do you have it, Nalini? Have you got one yet? Oh, all right, we'll redo it. Nalini will get you one anyway. Nalini's from Phillips, so that probably wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Tony Adami? Tony, thank you very much. Oh, not the whole box there, Marty. <laughs> Just the, DP, the Dragon Professional Individual, the little box. But don't move anywhere. The winner for the Philips Speech Mic Premium Push Button Model LFH 3500, a truly wonderful power prize, is John McKenna. Hello. There he is up here. Well done, John. I hope, I hope it's useful. And finally, VoiceX uh, will offer you one hour of training, customization, whatever you need on Dragon, which would be a good one. And John McKenna, you can't win two at once. That wouldn't be fair. Hang on. <laughs> um, Chris Reardon. Chris, over there. Thank you very much. Um, what's left? Oh, did I give them all away? Is it over here? Oh. You can make no, it's okay. It's over here. Okay, so please go to the bar. We'll have some food coming uh, shortly as well. Uh, please make sure you stay for some food and refreshments, and we'll all be here to uh, answer additional questions. Thank you very much.